Jesus' name. And if we give our life to His word, live in His word, abide by His word. I will give thanks to Thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. The NLT says it this way, that thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your worksmanship is marvelous. How would I know it? See, God's word is telling us, it's telling you, it's telling me that we are and that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That you are wonderfully complex. And if that's the case, why? Why do we set our limits beneath the power and the purposes that God Almighty has put in our spirits and created us to be? If you realize that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that God has created you, have made you one of a kind, why are you living, if to whom it may concern, below the spiritual poverty line? He says you are complex. Not just complex, but wonderfully complex. That means that you are not simple. That, that, that means that, that, that you can be beyond figuring out at times, and you need to know right now when somebody or something that is complex, and it has some complexity to it, everybody will not understand you. They won't understand how God has took all those different components and, and put those, those attributes, those skills, those talents, the things that make you you. Don't get mad or upset when they don't seem to get it. <laughs> it's okay. It's not that there's something wrong with you. It's just that they can't figure you out. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And it's okay if everyone, or sometimes if no one, understands you. You're complex. There's nothing simple about you. Just because of who created you. A wonderful workmanship craftsmanship, a design that only God can put together. But I wonder if you realize that, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that your DNA is unique. Your DNA, your divine nature is authentic. DNA, your DNA that shows you were made in the image and the likeness of God. I wonder if you know that today. I, know, I wonder if you know that you were made and created in the image and the likeness of God. Based on the things that many of you have been doing in 2011, I wonder if you realize that. And since you are complex, individuals who desire to know you, individuals who desire to get with you, they must be willing to invest in your substance. They, they have to be willing to invest in the things that make you, you. They have to be ready to make some deposits in you and not just withdrawals. They have to be ready and willing to help build you up and nurture what God has put in you and not take, steal, rob, and deplete your resources. Do you understand that in 2012, get that in your head that you're complex. That if someone wants to be with you, someone wants to get with you, they have to bring something to the table. Yeah. 
You have to understand your DNA, your complexity. You have to understand what makes you, you. It means that people need to take time to learn who you are. You, you, you can't learn who someone is on those one night stands, those one night hookups, those hit its and quit its. You need to, they need to want to take time to learn who you are, to understand and try to figure out how God has made you and shaped you. They need to show an interest in that because if they don't show an interest in that, you don't need to be with that person. You don't need to be with him. You don't need to be with her. People need to take the time to try to get to know you. And if they are not willing to do that, it just shows that their simplicity <laughs> cannot match up with your complicity. Oh, let's move, Lord. Let's move slow. How many truly appreciate how God has fashioned you? I don't even know if you ever thought like that before. Have you ever thought like that before? Do you appreciate how God has fashioned you? How God has molded you? How God has crafted you? How God has shaped you? That should make you want to honor and cherish what God has blessed you with. When you take the time to, 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 to try to figure out and appreciate how God has made you you. You should then appreciate and honor and cherish what he has allowed you to have. You have been bought with a price. Your life is not your own. I know you think the body is yours, but it all belongs to God. And if you appreciate what God has done, a lot of you would treat yourselves better, respect yourselves more, and you... You were made by God. And that's according to the word of God. See, as, as Christians, we, we use the word as the final authority. So I'm not saying that you were created by God because it's something that I thought up in my own mind. But you were created and you were made by God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made according to what the scriptures say. That's right. According to what the word of God says. And you need to understand this because I know somebody thinks this right now that you are not a mistake. Well, you are not an accident. If God knitted you and placed you in your mother's womb before the foundation of the earth, he is the one that allowed the sperm to get with the egg and to conceive. He knew exactly what he was doing before you got here. You are not a mistake. You are not an accident. I don't care what your mama said. Yeah, you overheard them talking at the table when they got drunk that night. You overheard somebody. Yeah, you heard what they said. You are here for a purpose, and you are here for a reason. The devil is a lie. And the truth is not in him. In 2012, you need to know that God shaped you. God molded you that you're not a mistake, but you are part of his master plan. God is the one that makes you who you are. He's the one that makes you unique. There will never be another person on earth like you. There will never be another person on earth like Manny. Another person on earth like Tareem. No one like Isha. When you go on and, and out of here, that's it. There was nobody who could be you but you. He makes us all unique. Oh, I want to try to help somebody right here. And in that, he makes them tall. 
He makes them short. He makes them skinny. He makes some fat. He makes some with long hair, short hair, quote unquote good hair, nappy hair, light skin, dark skin. God makes everybody unique. It's God. So many people are spending fortunes trying to be something or someone that God has not created them to be. If God wanted you to have blue eyes and partner, you would have had blue eyes. If God wanted you to be white, then you would have been white. If he wanted you to be Hispanic, you would have been Hispanic. Take off the platform shoes because you're supposed to be four foot nine. And many people, many of us, are allowing other people's views, ideas, tastes, and likes to define and shape and change who you are. When you are fearfully and wonderfully made, you don't have to change for nobody. The Holy Spirit changes you from the inside out. But because someone has an opinion about you, you don't have to try to fit in to their, their, their expectations of how they think you should be. Because you're complex. And they can't even figure themselves out, let alone try to figure you out. My young sisters, you need to know, you are who God wants you to be. Don't get caught up in the magazines and the movies and the television and the videos thinking that you have to be like her, that you have to be a vixen, that you have to wear these clothes and, and live in that house. You don't have to be like everybody else because God has created you to be you and there would never be another you like you.